All right, here we go. Take number 50. <laughs> What's up? It's Morrissey, and I got another video for y'all. This one I wanted to talk about one of my favorite plugins that I use to tighten up drums. It's called the DS10 Drum Shaper by XLN Audio. So I use this on everything, and specifically this track that I was working on with my boy Rich Furness, and it's called I Feel It. Um, I wanted to tighten up the drums because it was really busy. I, in my productions, I use a lot of percussion and hi-hats, and I just wanted to make it really tight so that the bass can shine, the kick can poke through, and whatnot. Let's have a quick sample. There we go. So let's get right into it. I'm going to sample, I'm going to show you these right now, this top. And do you hear that? That is amazing. When you have an open hi-hat that's just that shit will take up mud. So you want it to make it nice and tight and tick, tick, tick. Here's another example of where I use it. Tambourines. Tambourines are notorious, notorious for taking up space. You hear that? Nice and tight. And what I'm pretty much doing, I'm keeping it really simple. I'm taking that sustain button and pulling it all the way down to 100%, specifically for this tambourine. But for that top, I did a little, what I do? I also did 100%. Um, I add a little attack, which just brings up the transients, pokes a little more through. Same thing with Mojo. Um, now, because they're so busy, I was trying to not add more. I was just trying to take away, which is why you don't see much attack and you see sustain all the way down. However, you can add attack to kind of add some more transits or mojo to kind of fatten it up. And here, I'll do an example. Now you see that? It kind of like added that attack and made it really hard. Sometimes it gets harsh. I'm not trying to do that. I was just trying to tighten. Perfect, uh, another example, I'm using it on bass. Now check this out. This bass line, when it was recorded, it had a lot of side chain on it. Look at all that side chain information. That shit is curving in, it's coming in late and it's kind of dragging. So what I wanted to do was use Drum Shaper to add more transients earlier and to tighten so that it's not draggy. Let's hear this bass line. I don't know if, if you hear it, it's a bit draggy. I actually added it to the drum group this time. I mean, to the bass group. So let's hear that. And as you can see, I added attack. I still tightened up with sustain and I added some mojo tightness. And look at the transients. <laughs> You see the top of those transients? It actually is going upwards instead of just downwards. So you're seeing some perceived, I mean, this is visual, right? We don't know if it's actually doing it without testing it uh, with your ears. So always use your ears. But I can hear it's adding 
it's almost uh, fixing all that side chain that happened earlier. It's like adding it back a bit, but also tightening it. So long story short, I use this shit a lot. And when you accumulate, you just get your drums so much more tighter. And I highly suggest anybody who's trying to tighten up those drums use that DS10. Uh, I was using in the past the SPL D-verb, the D-verb plus, and does pretty much the same thing. Um, you could turn that dial, the reverb reduction, all the way up if you're trying to do that same thing. It's cool. It's good. It was my favorite at the time until Drum Shaper came. So that's all, y'all. Another quick video. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you use it. And uh, let me know in the comments if you're using that or another transient shaper um, to help tighten drums. All right. Peace.